The Valley of Newark Scottish Rite Masons owned the mansion for nearly three decades. I started going there in uh, the middle 50s, around 1955. There is the building when it was occupied by the Scottish Rite. And you, again, you can see it's a gorgeous building. They decorated the interior with Masonic symbols, added a 700-seat auditorium for their ritual performances, and hosted events for their members throughout the year. We just had an office there. The secretary's office was there. There was a pool table in the pool room where several of the members liked to play pool and used to play pool. We'd sit around in the building and just use it more like a gathering place. During this time, the organization was at its peak in membership, and the grandeur of the house only added to the Mason's prestige. The main hall gives you an idea of how ornate the home was. To go in there and uh, say, I'm a part of this, I'm really a part owner as a member of the Scottish Rite, it was a, a wonderful experience. When we were moving out, they were ready to, to toss out blueprints of the building. And the old photograph of the building, this is prior to the Scottish Rite taking over the building. Until then, the mansion had been a massive monument to the success of one man, immigrant turned beer baron Gottfried Kruger. Gottfried Kruger was one of the big five beer brewers. He was a beer baron, as they called him. There was a famous beer back then called Kruger's Beer. Of course, Gottfried Kruger and Kruger Beer and all the things that he did. Gottfried Kruger was born in Germany in 1837 and immigrated to Newark at the age of 15. He worked his way up from sweeping floors in his uncle's brewery to helming his own brewing company. His namesake brewery would later achieve renown as the first company in the U.S. to offer beer in cans. Kruger's interests extended into civic life as well, establishing numerous charitable organizations and holding a number of public offices. He was a wonderful, very giving man. He had gotten a great deal from his citizenship, and he gave a great deal back. As his fortunes and family grew, Kruger commissioned the construction of the massive mansion on what was then the most fashionable street in the city. High Street was the core of the German upper class in Newark. The Krugers were Germans and didn't give a damn about the old wasp hierarchy. It became a great silk stocking district in the days of the Kruger mansion. Many other great homes were built along High Street. High Street was occupied by the people who were the civic leaders of the city. And they had their houses and they had their mansions on the street. Before it was renamed Martin Luther King Boulevard, the reason it was named High Street is because of the geographic location of the street. It was at the highest level in the city of Newark. He wanted to put something high on a hill that was majestic to show the world that he had arrived. Kruger's mansion boasted three stories, 40 rooms, and a brass-domed stained-glass oculus that shone down to the grand staircase below. This was apparently Kruger's library. Um, or so, because when I was a kid, there were cabinets, glass, wooden glass cabinets enclosed all around this room. Rooms featured custom-carved cabinetry and opulent decorations. When Mr. Kruger built his house, he told the architect to outdo the Ballantyne House, that his house should be better than the Ballantyne House. And it was, and it is. <laughs> Completed in 1889, the mansion cost $250,000 and was the most expensive residence ever built in Newark. It was a grand flamboyant beer baron's house. There's a lot of richness that's still in this town, but we just can't let it go, you know, because then you could be anywhere. But when you have these kinds of buildings, you're somewhere. For generations, the Kruger Scott Mansion has been an unmistakable landmark of the Central Ward, a symbol of potential, perseverance, and success. For the German immigrant, 
who seized upon the promise of the American dream, with a fraternal organization who reimagined the home and gave it a new purpose, for the self-made woman who defied the odds to build an empire. The legacy of the Kruger Scott Mansion is etched in its proud tower and crumbling walls. Grand and fragile, the house on the hill awaits its next incarnation.